Okay, so this first problem involves a cliff and uh, it's a kind of looks like this and we're gonna shoot a projectile from this location in this direction and this direction is 37 degrees and the velocity is equal to 100 meters per second um, and so the projectile kind of goes like kind of goes like this trying to draw a parabola and it ends up uh, hitting the ground there at point P. Now the height of this thing is 140 meters high and the question asks uh, the first part is Determine the, determine the time for the projectile to reach the ground. So, therefore, we can change this problem into a vertical analysis. So, essentially, we could take the problem and change it simply, instead of having it be like two dimensions, have it just be one dimensional and have the initial velocity be up and then it just go up and then it comes back down and so the, the horizontal horizontally there's no gravity so therefore um, the horizontal velocity like when you're looking at it over here right when you when you launch it this way there's going to be a horizontal velocity and there is going to be a, uh, a vertical velocity. These two vertical and horizontal velocities are going to add head to tail, right? This is the vertical and this is the horizontal and they're going to add to give you the uh, resultant vector which is 100. And we know that this angle is 37. Well that's supposed to be horizontal there. So, um, but what I'm saying, uh, what I'm suggesting here is let's, let's just deal with the uh, vertical velocity. So what is the vertical velocity? Well, um, so the vertical is going to be this side, right? So I mean, I could draw it like this. If I go like this and this is 100, that's the resultant and I know and I go like this and I go like this and I said this is 37 so what's what's this vertical gonna gonna be so the vertical velocity is gonna be the resultant or the hypotenuse times sine 37 so now we know what the vertical velocity is okay so we can come over here and say that's 100 sine 37. Now the question is, how long does it take to get back down? And so now we'll say delta D. So that's our, you could say that's our initial velocity. And of course we'll say up is positive. And so this, this number is going to be positive. But our delta D now is going to be not positive 140 because we're starting here and we're ending up down here so we could say this is zero and up at this location we're at 140 so therefore that's df minus di so that's zero is the final position minus your original position so you can see that our delta d is going to be negative 140 meters another way i think about this is that the delta is the change right so if it gained altitude if it went up then it would be positive but in this case it's losing altitude even though initially it does go up but but later it comes back down so our delta d is going to be negative 
So what we need to do is we need to find an equation that has delta D in it and uh, time, or initial velocity and time. So we're looking for time, so we'll write question mark there. So essentially, let's take a look at this one. Let's say delta D equals, this is a kinematics problem, 1 half AT squared plus VIT. Now, we've got this problem here, and um, this is going to end up being a quadratic for us. Okay? So, in order to solve the quadratic, we have to plug in our numbers and then rearrange in the form uh, a x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And then we can solve the problem. So let's first uh, get our numbers. So starting from up here, uh, delta D is going to be negative 140, and that's 1 half. And acceleration is going to be negative 9.8. And T, well, that's the unknown. And then uh, VI was uh, 100 sine 37, and then finally T. So we should uh, rearrange this thing in the correct format. Uh, so let's start with this term here, which is the ax squared term. x squared here is just t, right? So that's going to be negative uh, 4.9 uh, t squared. And then plus, now let's calculate the number of uh, 100 sine 37, which is 60 point one eight T and so this is all equal to negative uh, 140 now this is in the wrong format right because we need to move this guy over to that side of the equation so we'll get negative 4.9 T squared plus 60.18 T plus 140 equals 0 now that is in the form a t squared plus b t plus c equals 0. So now we can solve this by using the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula, now we're just going to substitute for x, right? But it's essentially it says x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Now, uh, in this case, we're not solving for x, we're solving for t. But that's the same quadratic formula, because this is a quadratic. OK, so now we got to plug in our numbers. So we'll go negative. 60.18 plus or minus the square root of uh, 60.18 squared minus 4 times uh, negative 4.9 times, let's move this over a little bit, and then we would go C, which is 140. And then we'll divide this by uh, 2a. And a was negative 4.9. OK, so now we've got to work with our calculator and see what the roots are. So plugging that through our calculator. And sometimes, just to tell you, some calculators are able to solve quadratics uh, just simply by typing in the coefficients a b and c and they will be able to provide you the roots so in this case uh, the root of negative 2 is incorrect 
because it's negative. So uh, that's wrong. So our solution here is 14.28 uh, seconds. Obviously, we can't have a negative time, right? Uh, and so, um, by the way, you know, if you're wondering what that negative time is, that's the time. So if I drew the quadratic like this, and it went up and over, so this this time, you know, from here to here, is uh, fourteen point two eight. But this time, so this is where it starts at the top of the cliff, and we're going that way. But this time would be two seconds on this side. So, you know, that's the time you could think of it as. If it, if it started from back here, from the ground, how much time would it take to get up to 140? Uh, but we're not interested in that time, so this is wrong. So now, um, now we've solved part A. So that's part. That's the answer to part A. 14.28 seconds. Okay. So. Now, part B is asking for the range. So now we want to know, so that was in seconds, but now what we want to know is from the top, you know, to where it hits at point P, what is the range, so the, the horizontal distance that the projectile travels. So this is actually not hard because horizontally, uh, it's constant velocity. So there's no acceleration horizontally. Therefore, the equation is d equals vt. So this is horizontal distance, horizontal velocity. Now the time is the time in the air. So this was already calculated. We already know this. That's 14.28 seconds. And so essentially, we just have to multiply that by the horizontal velocity. In order to get the horizontal velocity, let's go back to our uh, original launch position, right, from here. And this was 100. Now, the horizontal velocity here is therefore going to be 100 cosine 37. So the range is going to be the horizontal velocity multiplied by the time in the air, which was calculated from part one. So the result of that calculation is going to be 1,140 meters. So that's the horizontal range, horizontal displacement. OK, so that was part B. So let's go on to the next part. So part C is asking when the projectile hits the ground at point P, what are the horizontal and vertical components of its velocity. So we've got that's the vec that's the resultant, and then we've got th this vertical, and we've got this horizontal. Now the horizontal velocity doesn't change because it's constant. It was it's always going to be 100 times cosine 37 because there's no gravity horizontally. So we know this one's going to be 100 cosine 37. But the vertical velocity does change at point P. Well, it's changing constantly. And essentially, we can go back to the situation of essentially it going up and coming back down with a change of 140 meters. So this would be like 140, and this is 0. So what would the velocity at this point be? And 
So we can solve that with this kinematics equation. We could say v final squared equals 2a delta d. You can solve this with other things, but um, this is one way that we don't have to rely on any previous calculations. So therefore, we could find our final velocity like this. We could take the square root of 2a delta d plus vi squared. And well, then that's just going to be v final, right? To get rid of the square. And so we can put our numbers in now. So it's 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 140 plus, now, the vi is going to be vertical initial. So that, remember, from before was 100 sine 37, and that's all squared. And so now if we plug that through our calculator, so that's going to give me 79 point approximately 8 uh, meters per second. But remember now, OK, this is down. So this, this final, this is the vertical final vertical. Now I know this answer is a positive here as I've written it. However, remember that I'm taking the square root. And if we, if we look at this vector diagram, my final vertical is down. So I've got uh, 79.8 down. And my horizontal was 100 times cosine 37, which is, again, approximately 79.8 or so. So essentially, the, at, at point P, when it hits the ground, the horizontal and the vertical velocities are equal. And so the resultant right, would be like this. And the angle with the horizontal is obviously going to be 45. I don't even have to do any calculations because it's a, it's a what's that called? A triangle with uh, two legs, the right angle triangle. The right angle legs of the triangle are um, equivalent. And, um, and so now we could just use uh, Pythagoras, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to get the resultant. So <coughs> this resultant is essentially uh, 79.8 squared plus 79.8 squared, take the square root, and I end up with uh, 1, 1, approximately 113 meters per second is the resultant as it hits the ground. And it's, it has equal horizontal and vertical components when it hits the ground. And there's the angle that makes 45 degrees. And so I think that uh, finishes the question. Yeah. Okay, thanks.